In this lesson, we're going to take a look at file streams and file I.O. Now you've been using streams all semester long. You've read things from the keyboard, you've written things to the standard output or the screen. You've used the insertion operators. We've kind of glossed over how those work, so let's formalize the discussion real briefly here now. So the insertion operator, which is the less and less than, you use with a COUT statement. I'm going to give a little bit more in-depth explanation of what a COUT statement is. Likewise, with the greater than greater than, which is the extraction operator, you're using a CN statement. So let's take a look at just exactly what's going on. Well, this is an operator. It's a function. It's a binary operator, just like plus or equals. It takes two operands. The operand on the left is a streaming object. So CN is a streaming object, just like COUT is a streaming object. CN reads information from the keyboard. COUT outputs information to the standard output, which is the screen. And VAR, of course, is a modifiable memory address. So what you're asking the compiler to do here is to stream information from the keyboard into a variable with that CN statement. First of all, if you're going to declare a stream capability, from a file to your program or from your program to a file, you need to declare a file stream. And if you're going to do that, you need to include a system file called fstream. So you'll need to add to your includes fstream. Of course, you only want to include these files if you use them. So how do you declare a stream from an input file? Well, it's ifstream, which is short for input file stream, and then whatever you're going to name that object. In this case, I've named it fin. That's file in. And again, it's always the same format. It is a type and the name of the object. Still that same format. So ifstream fin creates a stream that will stream data from a file. ofstream fout will create a stream that will stream data to a file. Even though you've created these streams, they're not connected to anything. You have to connect them. And there's several ways to do this. You can do it during the creation of the stream. So you could say ifstream fin and then in parentheses quote input.dat and that will connect the stream to an existing data file in the same directory. Likewise, ofstream fout output.dat creates a text file in the same directory. Now, this isn't the best way to do things. Another way to do this is to use the open function. This is a member function of the class of objects to which fin and fout belong ifstream, ofstream. So open is a member function of those types. What you're asking C++ to do is to connect the stream fin to the uh, existing file input.dat. The problem is, is that it may not connect. It's possible. Well, what might be the problem? The file might not exist. You might have misspelled it. Could be the wrong directory. There's all sorts of possibilities. So a better way to do this is to create a character array called file and to jump into a loop we're going to start by clearing the fail bit. This allows a retry. Doing this without ever having that bit set doesn't hurt anything. Of course you prompt for the name of the file, use a get line function to read in the name of the file and then try to connect it. Now if we go back a slide or two you'll see that I've used the double quotes here, which implies that the parameter for the open function is a what? It's a C string or a null terminated character array, which means that you always have to pass it a null terminated character array, which is what you've done here. File is a NTCA. Well, once this has connected, then fin will become true. So not fin is false and you're out of that loop. If fin returns false, that means that you haven't connected and you'd have to go back and clear that bit again. All right, so once you're out of this loop, you're connected to the uh, file. Let's take a look if you happen to read in the name of your file, a standard string variable, things are going to be just a little bit different. Still, you'll clear the bit, you'll prompt, you'll read in, but you can't just put file there because that is a string type object. It's not a C string. It's not an alternate character array. Well, you can call a special function of the class of objects to which file belongs, i.e. the string class. It's C underscore str, and it's a function call. 
Okay, you can see that by the parenthesis. And that will return, file.c underscore str will return, yep, you guessed it, a C string with the same value as the name that's been read in to that string variable. And of course, once that connects, then you'll be out of that loop. Okay, let's see how this works. We've set up a stream, we've connected it. How do you read in? Well, it's going to work exactly the way the extraction operator works for the keyboard. If you say CN greater than greater than num, then you read in from the keyboard and information. Well, sure enough, this does the same thing. When you open the file, you can imagine that there's this little pointer that is pointing to the very first data item. When you do fin greater than greater than num, then you read in that data item and little pointer goes over to the next data item. So fin, then streams num, we'll pick up the negative 1, then the 34, then the 56, and etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. It's always a good idea to close a file. It's sort of like closing a door after you've left the house. You don't want to let any corruption in, so to speak. So once you're finished using a file, close the stream. And you'll notice in this case, we have nothing here as a argument to the function. Okay, why is that? A stream can only be connected to one file at a time. If I end dot close, I will disconnect that stream from the currently connected file. Okay, let's take a look at some more examples of reading from a file. Suppose that our format is last name, first name, and then age. All right, I guess today I'm 12 years old. So, how do I want to read this in? I have to know the format of the information, and if I know that it's always last name, first name, and then age, I can read it in using the extraction operator. Okay, so I would read in last, that's declared a string, first, that's declared a string, age, I know the pointer is going to go to the beginning of the next piece of data, okay, last, first, age, and in this case, I'm depending on the names to be uh, complete words, contiguous strings of characters. So, for example, if I had a first name of Laverne, that's not going to work right because it has a space in it, and I'm going to have to use the getLine function. Let's take a look at another example. Suppose that my input.dat file looks like this, where I have a class number, a course, a section, and then a title. How am I going to read the information? Well, I will have multiple lines reading. First, the class number, and I know that it is a integer. The course, which is an integer. The section, which is a character. And then the title, which is a string. And I'm going to have to use the get line because, of course, there are spaces. How am I going to read multiple lines of this material? Of course, I would put it in some sort of a loop. And we're going to take a look at how would you loop through a file and how to, to know when the end of the file exists, when to stop reading in the next lesson. So again, let's take a look here. I've got uh, last name, first name, but it's delimited by a comma. How do I do that read? If I just use two strings, last and first, and read them in using the extraction, I'm going to read in that comma. Well, maybe that's okay. Maybe there's no way around that. Uh, you can always read in and then get rid of that comma. But also, I'm going to now deal with this possibility of having white space inside a name. So I'm going to use the getLine function. And I'm going to use a string variable. So I'll use the appropriate getLine function. I'll pass in the appropriate file stream and read into the appropriate variables. In the first case, I'm going to use the delimiter of the comma, and in the second case, I'm going to use the delimiter as the new line character. All right, so those are the very basics of uh, creating, connecting, and using and closing file streams.